Hey everybody, thanks for joining us today. Today we have the great pleasure of being able to interview David Chu. He's currently the president of the San Francisco Board of Supervisors and also represents District 3. That's the Financial District, Chinatown, North Beach, parts of Russian Hill and Knob Hill. He was elected in 2008 and became the president of the Board of Supervisors in 2009. He also graduated from Harvard, earned a master's there, and a JD. So outside of being a complete overachiever, let's get to know David Chu. All right, David, thanks so much for taking the time to talk to our viewers today. Just to warm you up, we're going to have a quick lightning round of questions. <laughs> Are you ready? All right, let's okay. go. Favorite donut in San Francisco? Favorite donut? Uh, Bob's Donut okay. on Polk Street between uh, Sacramento and Clay. And what time do you usually get those donuts? Like uh, midnight or are you talking like 8 in the morning? 2 a.m. <laughs> okay, good. It's the late night after the bars close. That's right. Favorite restaurant in the city? Favorite restaurant in the city. This is an impossible question because I represent it the is. Northeast neighborhoods that have all of the greatest restaurants in the city. I would say Kari for Greek, um, Tommaso's Original Joe's for Italian sort of North Beach, and then uh, for uh, uh, Helman's for Akian. Delicious. Yeah. Favorite shampoo? Favorite shampoo. I don't think I have a favorite <laughs> shampoo. Okay, uh, if it could be Batman or Superman for the day, who would you be? Batman. And easy. why is that? Why is it so easy? Uh, he's actually an ordinary guy that has a lot of really amazing gadgets. So David Chu relates to Bruce Wayne. Uh, I, I, not on the money front, <laughs> but on the uh, the wanting to save one city front. Awesome. Yeah. You could travel anywhere in the world right now. Where would you go? Anywhere in the world. Um, Bali. Love it. You would be on a beach. I'd be on a beach. Okay. Is a tiger orange with black stripes, or is it black with orange stripes? The tiger is orange with black stripes. Ding. Okay. Favorite social network? Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram? <laughs> I gotta say, not just because of my company at the moment, but uh, LinkedIn. He's playing to the crowd. <laughs> All right. Your favorite part about your awesome wife, Candace? Uh, Candace is the sweetest woman in the world. That I would agree with. The last great book you read? Uh, Albert Brooks, 2030. It's a that? parody imagining what life would be uh, in the year 2030, assuming a number of things. Assuming they have found a cure for cancer, okay. which means that seniors never die, mm -hmm. which means that... Uh, young people are essentially paying off the debts of everyone who's retired, hmm. which means that uh, they're under crushing debt. And then imagine that the big one has struck California, okay. and the United States doesn't have money to wow. rebuild L.A. Wow. That's the premise of the book. What's it called again? It's called 2030. 2030. It's amazing. And then last one. Let's laugh out loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In and out or five guys. Oh, uh, a big debate among in and out is that's easy for me. In and out. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> Let's go back to where it all began. Born and raised where? Uh, born in Cleveland, Ohio. When I was uh, two, mm -hmm. my folks moved uh, my family to Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. And then you went to school at Harvard. I did. What made you want to go and get your master's and JD? Uh. When I was why in college. Why not just quit once you graduated with an undergrad? I mean, you're already at the top. Why not? Why do you have to do more stuff? Because uh, I was a glutton for fun. <laughs> yeah. Because I didn't know any better. Uh, yeah, I was, uh, I studied the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and just super passionate uh, about political junkie, policy wonk, just love thinking about how do you make communities work better? How do you make cities work better? Yeah. And uh, sort of our, our American political system. I was just fascinated by it. You are a solid Asian son. Uh, not really at all. Uh, <laughs> most uh, most sons or daughters of Asian immigrants don't want to have don't want to have to do anything with community activism or yeah. public service or or public policy. And what did your parents do growing up? Uh, my dad. I come from a family of uh, of healers. Hmm. Uh, I like my, that term. My grandfather uh, sold herbs. Mm. Uh, although I always have to explain the good kind. Well, I always have to explain <laughs> the San Francisco crowd. He sold. Chinese herbs in okay. old country as opposed to San Francisco herbs. Yes. Uh, and uh, 
raised my my dad's family of nine in World War Two, okay. uh, and which is part of the reason because things were tough back then. Uh, that my parents immigrated to the United States, mm -hmm. and my dad became a medical doctor. Got it. Uh, I actually have a brother who is a professor of uh, of Asian medicine, so I've come from a family that thinks yeah. about healing. Uh, and I was the great failure. No, uh, you I are did not. No, I did not do what my my Chinese mom and dad wanted me to do, which is go to med school. Well, you know, I was supposed to be a doctor, and I did not do that, so I did not fulfill that. So Failure too, You're looking brother. at two huge failures right here. <laughs> uh, you are currently running for Assembly District. Correct. 17. Eastern San Francisco. Why now, and why this race? Why is it important to you? You know, San Francisco, um, we've, you know, in my time in office, which has been about six years, mm -hmm. we went from uh, massive budget deficits to the healthiest budget we've had in years. We went from double-digit unemployment to creating 70,000 jobs, a lot of these jobs outside of tech. We went from not building any housing to, uh, to moving forward on a whole variety of fronts, building housing in many parts of the city. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and I want to keep moving my city, our city forward. Awesome. Uh, and I'm in my last term in office. I'd love to continue representing not just the Northeast neighborhoods that I currently represent on the Board of Supervisors, but uh, the Eastern neighborhoods yeah. uh, in Sacramento. Uh, for San Francisco, there are just so many things, so much work that I still want to get done around housing affordability and making sure that our public transit's working and making mm -hmm. sure that our schools are improving. Yeah. Um, so there is a huge generation of young people right now that are dying to give back, and they're doing it in multiple different ways online, in the private sector, in the public sector, private and public sector. Do you still think that there's do you encourage young people right now to still make a difference in the public sector? Or do you think that they have a greater chance of doing it, you know, working for a, a tech company or a startup or doing their own thing and building their own nonprofit? You know, I think um, I think San Francisco and the Bay Area is an amazing place for people to come. Whatever you're passionate in, is if it's about starting the next LinkedIn or Facebook or starting the next nonprofit that's going to change people's lives or running for office and uh, and dealing with the potholes and fighting crime. Um, this is a place where people can bring their passions and really, uh, really make something of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I always tell folks, do what you're passionate about, but ho I hope that there's some part of it that ends up giving back. Mm -hmm. um, and, and certainly right now in San Francisco, there's a lot of angst about what's happening and what's not happening. Mm -hmm. And I encourage a lot of uh, folks in the private sector, particularly younger um, younger workers to, mm -hmm. to get involved in the community. You can work at LinkedIn or Twitter or uh, any number of tech companies by day and then at night uh, join an affordable housing nonprofit or yeah. uh, you know volunteer at a soup kitchen or uh, or uh, become a big brother to, to a kid uh, who doesn't know anyone from your world right. uh, and just get involved. Yep. Alright, last question. For those who are looking to be strong leaders, what do you think is one of the things that they should always remember to do? What is a trait of someone? Is it just great patience? Is it listening? Is it um, just studying the facts? What is the trait of a great leader? I think part of it is having a vision of where you're going to move to, mm -hmm. about how you move forward as opposed to moving backwards, and then um, Building consensus and unity among a team, among a city, among a family of stakeholders uh, to move people in that direction. So it's 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 really it's a combination of things. It's it's having the, the foresight of where we're going to go, but also being able to motivate people around you, mm -hmm. get people on the same page, and develop the consensus to to move you there. So basically, don't do it alone. Absolutely, you can't do it alone. You can't do there it. There is no such thing as uh, there's no such thing as leadership that is uh, right solo. So we're going to finish uh, all interviews with a little new tradition, a uh, game of Rochambeau. Oh. That's two out of three. I hear you're pretty good at this. Are you ready? Uh, <laughs> sure thing. Here we go. Ready? Rochambeau. Uh. Rochambeau. Rochambeau. Oh, there you, there you go. go. All right, David. Right That's on. So much. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks.